All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for showing up to our Facilitation 101 uh, workshop. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the slides, and then I'll let Joe just take it away. Listen, uh, fellas, this uh, this presentation tonight is going to be uh, mostly focused. Well, it's going to be wholly focused on um, uh, uh, on group facilitation for um, in in the San Diego model. It's 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 our weekly in school group meetings and our uh, biweekly open community groups. And so um, this is this is uh, something that. Uh, We've been doing uh, here in San Diego since 2008, um, running our in-school uh, uh, program. Oh, look at Tom. You gave me credit for this presented by Joe Sigurdsson. Thank you for that. That's Look at these graphics. Is Tom the best? Look at this, you guys. So good. Um, anyway, so um, and, and then we're going to do a follow-up facilitation uh, training that would be more um, geared for um, the our Adventure Mountain Weekends, where we would really be focusing on uh, doing um, the um, Balls of Truth process and how to facilitate that, and then also our uh, the Sword Work process and, and how to how to facilitate that. So, um, but for tonight, uh, this is this is the focus. This is the bread and butter. This is us showing up in the schools every week sitting in circles with our boys a lot of you guys are, are doing this are a part of our our, our community and our our precious mentors that are there affirming and listening and encouraging our boys every week and we can't thank you enough for for that because lord knows um the uh the world needs more of that and certainly our young men that are struggling so so deeply all right, so group facilitation 101. Um, so here's an outline of what we're going to uh, cover. And and Tom, please feel free for you to jump in too, because Tom's put this together and he's he's just great. But we're going to go over our our acronyms: uh, FRAP, LAMP, and WAIT. These are our guiding principles for sitting in circle. We'll break these down and tell you all about that. We're going to talk about I and me statements um, and, and uh, how we can model our own personal accountability and responsibility and power, you know, own it, own it, our, our, what, what we're feeling, what we're sharing. Uh, group dynamics, we're going to break down how to handle different scenarios of what transpires in our circles. We're going to teach you a couple of techniques on how to, how to run a check-in, some basic questions, how to handle um, kids that are acting out and um, and do it in a good way, that is not uh, being a bad dad, um, and um, and how to how to wrap up a circle, close a circle, and how to uh, like you know you don't you're not you're not going to get 15 teenage boys together without some shit going down, and sometimes there's charges and 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 uh, and uh, disagreements and 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 things go down and. Kids can get under each other's uh, skin. So we're going to talk about charges and clearings. All right. Our fundamentals. These are our precepts for uh, for really uh, how we're, uh, we're showing up in our circles. Um, um, our, our boys and men's circles are no frap zones. We are not there to fix anybody's problem. We are not there to rescue these guys from what it is that's going on in their lives. And we're not there to give them advice or certainly not there to project our own values and experiences onto them. The whole principle around boys to men is meeting boys right where they are as they are. And, um, and, and we are there to lamp. And we are there to listen and uh, and and put all of our judgments to the side, just to meet them right where they are. You know, whatever behaviors they're participating in, whatever comes out that may be disagreeable to you, you know, that's where they are now. And, and there was a starting point for all this. Something happened to these guys that they figured out this is how it's got to be. And part of our job in Boys to Men 
is to build enough confidence and enough trust and impart enough love to be able to ask those questions, you know? Like, when did you feel first feel like this? When did you first start acting like this? You know, what happened to you? You know, and we can't do that until we, we build that trust. So listening is key. Accepting what they're saying is 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 is, is always like and we've heard some shocking stuff, guys. I mean, like there's stuff that you know curls my toes, and I just want to like say no, what? No, you know, but um, you know, that that doesn't come until till we've uh, established a relationship with these guys, you know. What we there are there to is to model, is to model what it is to be an elder, what it is to 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 meet boys with the uh, unconditional love and acceptance, you know, and, and, and praising is, 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 is super key. And fellas, it takes very little, you know, if a kid comes in and you notice a haircut, say, dude, you're looking sharp. Love the haircut. When'd you get that? You know, or, uh, you know, if, if they've got a, a new pair of kicks on, where, where'd you get those dude? They, they, you know, they're awesome. And, um, and if you know anything about, like you, you know, if especially if you see them in some, some Converse, and and you had a pair, you know, Chuck Taylors when you were a kid, you say, hey, I had those, you know, just some place to connect with them. But, but um, praising them, you know, for 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 even for showing up, and when they're sharing and they're being honest or vulnerable, say, man, that is men's work. You know, that was very courageous of you to say that. That thank you for sharing. You know, just any way we can, we can, um, you know, really, uh, you know, let them know that we are there. We see them, we appreciate them. And, 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 and we're finding the goodness in these guys, you know? And then um, the last one, and, and this, 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 you know, look, I understand men, we as men, I, as a man, let me do an I statement here, Tom. I like to fix things. I like to take a situation and go, oh, I know exactly what needs to happen here, fellas. Uh, listen to me, <laughs> you know? I like to do that, but, um, you know, our job isn't to do that. So our job is to share what happened to us, you know, how we felt, you know? the decisions we made, the price we paid for some of our choices, you know? You know, so the 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 weight acronym here, why am I talking? You know, if we aren't talking to be uh, either sh share honestly about our story, and we gotta be brief, because, you know, when we tell the truth and when we share our stories, we're creating that... Um, that that the the vulnerability the honesty the the liminal space the safety for the boys to step in too so when we share our stories we got we we got to be brief you know it's just like you know you know yeah i i, 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 I think it's really important that um, that we're brief. And I, you mentioned that a couple of times, and I think that's really important because the more time that we're talking, the less time that they're talking and the less time that they're talking and sharing, the less opportunity they have to, to, uh, to get off of their shoulders, whatever it is that they need to get off their shoulders. And it, uh, and another part of that waiting is recognizing when they are feeling their emotions and, for some of us, and for me, I know at one point it was really difficult for me to feel my emotions. And when I see somebody else feeling their emotions, I feel uncomfortable. And then I have to jump in with something to say, but all I'm doing is just interrupting their process and interrupting their opportunity to really feel what they're going through. So waiting is really important. And the silence is sometimes just as important as uh, as the questions. It absolutely is, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, man. That that, that guys, if we if, if you can just 
you know, part of part of the the facilitation process is also following the boys and 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 reading their their body language. And when you see a kid, and if he stops, and he's feeling something. It's super important to just let let them feel that and and then let them be the next one to speak. Um, we if we're just peppering them with questions and. And, and trying to get them to open up that, that it's counterproductive. It, the waiting is very, very powerful. Very powerful. All right. Are there any questions? Should we take some questions right here on, 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 on these fundamentals? Yeah, I think it'd be a great time. Yeah. I can't see no, everybody. No questions, just affirmation of what you said. Okay. Oh, good. So uh, everybody, uh, so, uh, so uh, we did a good job, Tom. No questions. Oh, look, at, look, I'm getting lines on my face from the sun. There we go. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Okay. I and me statements. All right. Tom, go ahead. Yeah. So I and me statements are really important because, um, what often happens is uh, it when when I hear somebody speaking to you know you or they or you know when and uh, oftentimes I I get disconnected from uh, the whoever is sharing and this is mostly for the men and the mentors in the group this isn't really for the boys um, I don't want to do a whole lot of tone policing or language policing for the boys they're going to express themselves however they're expressing themselves because this is brand new to them but us as grown men we are there to model for them what it looks like to express ourselves very clearly and very cleanly and by using i and me statements it helps us take ownership of what we are speaking to so if i say something like you know how um you know sometimes we say something that we don't mean and um you know sometimes it hurts the people around us and you know you know sometimes we don't want to do that that distances me from the action that I took and so what actually happened there was I did those things <clears throat> and when I model for them <clears throat> that somebody else did those things and I'm not willing to own that and and take ownership and uh and be accountable to my actions I model for them um a, a lack of accountability so what i could say instead is i hurt somebody in my life and when i do that i distance myself from the people in my life and and you know i i have to repair those relationships and i have to make sure that i take accountability for what i said and what i did and that that rings a little bit more true and it's a, and it's more honest and it's easier to connect and and so when they see us being more vulnerable in that way, it gives them an opportunity to really share about what it is that they're going through. And so it's not just a ownership for us, but it's an opportunity and a modeling for them to say, oh, I can go really deep. Yeah. And, and, and like Tom said, but you know, if a kid says, you know, when your parents are fighting and it gets really scary, I, I know exactly what that kid's saying. You know, I don't need to correct him and 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 implement this, but um it's it's it it it, it is a, a good thing for us as as mentors in our modeling to use the kind of language where we're not deferring to the you or the we, but uh we are own, owning our own uh, experiences and thoughts and feelings. Um uh, and and not, not projecting them but when a kid's talking we're not to correct their language at all we just need to get down and bleed from the stomach with them which is um you know because it's it, it's risky business what we're doing and, and the fact that they even go there is uh is is a real privilege for us to be able to witness and be a part of that yeah i appreciate how you said that um it uh, the projection that's involved in there because it's so easy to project when I'm talking about somebody else and it's so easy to say oh you know when when they do this or when they do that and then it's easy for me to label that and then 
uh, and and talk about that instead of talking about what's really going on inside. And and when I distance myself from what is really going on in my life, it um, I I have a sense that it disconnects me from their struggles or what what their challenges are. Yeah. Yeah, and I know we've got some 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 very skilled and talented guys on this call that are familiar with this concept. I'm wondering if anybody has anything they want to add or if anybody has any questions. Uh, Tom Steiger, I see your hand up. Steve. Yeah, I'll, ju I'll jump in here. No, thanks for this. It it just reminds me, this, this, this slide reminds me of when I'm speaking to a group, whether it's, you know, no matter who it is, um, to avoid the weasel words and being indirect and uh, to bring that sort of warrior level of language, warrior level of responsibility. And since this is facilitation, I wanted to ask you, how do you, let's say you're, you're leading a circle and one of your mentors does this does you know doesn't use an i or a me statement and you know how do you gently put that correction in in a transparent way because they've already been trained to do this and we do we all forget sometimes um so you know what does that look like yeah i i would let it go i i would let i'm i would i i would say something afterwards but i would not correct a mentor in front of the boys uh, uh, I, word copying to me drives me crazy that's just me tom too mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. like i don't i i see tom's tom fan smiling uh uh oh and i see uh uh that attila has something to add to this uh but yeah i would i would wait and i would say something afterwards attila what would you do <laughs> Since uh, with the mentors, there's a gentle way of, of correcting that without looking like we're being confrontational in front of the boys. But uh, to me, one of the fundamentals in dealing with the mentors and the boys in our languaging is to never shame and never guilt. And so that's why this is always a sensitive issue in word copying. It's important to make sure that, that we're understood and we're understanding them but always putting it in a terms that's not to shame, but it's just a guide. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clarify, because the end game here is always to get down to the root cause of what's causing the behavior that they've got going on for. Yeah. Yeah. And for for me, I um I would venture to say that uh, I'm not all that gentle. Um, so what I'll often do is I'll say something like, I'm gonna stop you for just a moment can't and ask a question or say is there a question there or would you mind rephrasing that as an i statement and um and just offering that uh that moment to uh to uh, reprocess exactly what it is that they're saying and say okay you know i i totally understand what you're saying and then reflect back to them and say you know what i hear you saying is and would you mind rephrasing that as an i statement okay tom go ahead bud Thank you, Tom. Tom Fan. Um, just just further to that, when I was in Virginia and observing circles there for my training, yeah. I did this this situation did come up, and it may be more of a matter of where the facilitator is standing or sitting and where the mentors are sitting, but it I, it's not out of the realm of workability to me to, you know, if that if that person that's speaking sitting right next to me or, you know, within a whisper's earshot, I statements. Just okay. a gentle reminder, not not to call them out in front of the whole group, but just a gentle aside. Yeah. yeah. A little quick sidebar to, to get to, to put that correction in. Great. And we and, you know, we, we've got 20 guys on this call. Does everybody understand where we're going with this? Is that, I mean, conceptually, you you, you you understand the language is is about just ownership for our feelings, our behaviors, uh, you know, the, uh, the way we're communicating. And it's also about clarity and modeling clarity for the boys and personal power. Like it can be disempowering using you and we and deflecting and uh and projecting is is, is disempowering so we want to show them 
in a, in a good way what a healthy man looks like, how a healthy man communicates. And this is just one way of, of stepping further into that. So, yeah. Uh, and there can be an agreement beforehand too. So I've seen groups uh, use the, the um, uh, American sign language. I as a soft reminder or use, uh, you know, sort of this gesture as an, uh, and so if they don't see that, or if they, uh, if they don't, or if they continue to use, uh, you and they statements, then there can be another gentle reminder or whatever it may be. <clears throat> Go for okay. it, Attila. La last point, just so we can move on to, I just yeah. want to say the other, the other thing that works too is sometimes I'll say to a mentor, and how is that true for you? Yeah. So he can take that statement, and just turn it back on himself because we're always, always speaking to, and the only thing we can ever speak to is what is our truth? Yeah. Appreciate that, Attila. Great. It's great having all this talent on this on this uh, on this call. Thank you, guys. Uh, group dynamics. All right. <clears throat> Facilitator and mentor dynamics. What's the difference? All right. So we've we've got our 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 skilled facilitators, our our our, our paid staff. Uh, you know, they've got a multitude of responsibilities going into this. They are the liaison with the schools. They are the liaison with the parents, with the boys, you know? And it's important that they are on point um, uh, for um, uh, uh, facilitating and, and, and running uh, the meetings. Now, I know we've got a lot of talented guys in, uh, on, on this call and in, in our community that that know how to facilitate that 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 understand the dynamic of um asking the open-ended questions and and doing the active listening and the parroting to get the boys to go deeper into their story and all of that is welcome but as far as uh as as running the the circle uh we got we got to have a leader we got to have a guy in point and um and here's another thing and and listen i'm just let me let, let me i wish i could let me let, let me just take a look at this group i gotta slide this over yeah yes you know god bless our white grandfathers in this community you know <laughs> and you know if you notice our staff is is quite a bit more diverse you know and younger and it's really it's important for the boys to have a reflection of themselves in these leadership roles you know, it's aspirational for them. You know, when 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 Francisco uh, drops into his sergeant routine and takes charge of the situation, you know, um, it, it 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 and so uh, we want to make space for those guys uh, to be um, in charge. So, um, and it's it and it's it's and and you know, look, the, our, we got some really talented and long term guys. I see Brian Mulvaney on here. They understand the dance, you know. They understand the dance between um, the mentor and the facilitator, you know. And 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 uh, you know, and I I you know I I can I just I don't know everybody on this call, but I know everybody's heart on this call, or you wouldn't be here, you know. So. Um, yeah, we, we it's important that 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 the guy that that our staff uh you know take you know run the meeting and 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 be able to uh control the the flow of the meeting and and um and call out the boys um and uh but the but but our uh the, our our mentors are there to also co-facilitate and bring their their insights and their genius and their brilliance and their love and their compassion uh to the boys as well all that is welcome it's just if you we got to be willing to acquiesce if 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 tom steps in and changes the direction of the meeting like we got to support him in in being in a charge um um avoid storytelling and avoid oversharing okay so um so like and we talked we just talked about this um um uh, when we're talking about i um the 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 um frap and lamp um we don't we gotta um if we're talking too much then we're not making enough space for the boys so uh, attila is your hand up right now 
Yeah, I just wanted to back oh, up just. Oh, please do then. Can I? Of course. Sorry, sorry I keep interrupting for you, Joe, but I. No, no, this, no, no, no. This, this is the juice. This is this yeah. is the main course right here. And one of the things, just backing up to facilitators' responsibility and mentor responsibility and the dynamics there, facilitators' responsibility really is to bring the energy into the space, be aware of how the energy is moving in the circle, <clears throat> And how to how to stay on top of and be aware of the deflections, the 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 pushback, the avoidance, uh, kind of keeping an eye on things, and and being constantly aware of the previous slide, the frap, the lamp, the you know the why am I talking piece. Uh, for a mentor, you know mentors, you know to me personally is the the biggest benefit they bring is one what Tom Steiger and I used to kind of laugh about the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of success is just showing up. So the mentors just by showing up each week is something that a lot of the boys don't experience. It's a huge piece. And we always laugh that the other 20% is how you show up. Well, Tom said, that's really flipped. It should be 80% how you show up as a facilitator. You know, the 20% is really kind of guiding the dynamics of it. But I just wanted to reference that knowing that there's a lot of responsibility for the facilitator to constantly be aware of which way what direction is going here which which kid is beginning to shut down which which one do you have to kind of ask a few deeper questions to draw it draw out of them because you can just tell by looking at them by their facial expressions or their energy this kid needs to be drawn out you can and, and you can tell how deep and how far you can go with this kid before you're you're opening up a wound too much. So I just had to throw that piece out just to, you know, before we got onto the, get too far down the road here. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Attila. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to get drawn off topic and, and go off on a tangent. Uh, you know, part, we've got to be mindful of, of, of that stuff uh, in, in, in ourselves and, um, um, and stay stay on the topic, you know, and 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 uh, and and we've got we you know there's a wealth of experience uh, on this call right now, and and um, you know when we're able to you know authentically and vulnerably um, share our story about what happened to us, you know, and and. and you know, every time we're talking about what happened to us, how we felt, the that that that's modeling, you know, honesty and vulnerability, and that's creating that that liminal space for the boys to step in and do the same, you know. So, um, so so, but when 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 we get stuck in the story or we're oversharing and 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 taking up too much space or too much time, um. Or, or we get off on a tangent and 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 leave the topic and and you know then um, then you you know one of our gifted skilled facilitators may just pull you back on track or um, you know yeah a, another another piece way. of that yeah. is also um, when we get into story oftentimes what happens is we start doing our own work in these oh, spaces thanks, yes for you know these these spaces are for the boys and um and we're there to to draw um you know them into the circle and a part of the way that we do that is sharing our own story and um and so when we get caught up in our own story and we start telling it and then we start processing ourselves and then we start processing each other and then all of a sudden it becomes a circle for us when we're really here for the boys and um and so the uh, avoiding the storytelling and avoiding going for even longer than i'd say um a minute or two will prevent a lot of that from happening <laughs> tom it's interesting we are there to tell our story. We're here to hear their story. <laughs> and so the term is when we get stuck in our own story, then we're not, then we're just exactly what you just said. And thank you for pointing that out, Tom. Then we're, we're facilitating ourselves and we're not really there for the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're not so attached to our story 
or attached to what we want to say in our story that we that we are glossing over the point or that we're that we change the topic or that we miss the point or whatever it may be um you know tell the relevant piece and then get to the point and then offer it back to the boy that that we're engaging with and then give him an opportunity to to comment on that because that's what we're there for yeah thank you tom thanks you guys yeah um tom why don't you go ahead and take modeling check-in yeah sure so um the when we're um a lot of what we do when we start a group is we we're building rapport and uh, sometimes we'll enter into a check-in with a theme or a context. We may have a question. <clears throat> we may have uh, something that's going on in our own lives that we can bring to the circle that is, that can be relevant. And, um, and so uh, when we model that check-in, we want to make sure that we're, again, that we're clear and concise and to the point. And then when they start to share, we want to make sure that we're following their lead. So <clears throat> sometimes, you know, we'll bring up a topic or we'll have a question and whoever is checking in will just take it in a completely different direction. And what I've seen in the past is, or at least what I've seen in some circles is that um, they're redirected back to the topic that that we're, we're talking about. And we really want to avoid doing that because whatever they check in with is relevant to them in that moment. And the whole point of this is to give them an opportunity to share about themselves and to share about what is relevant to them. And what, uh, you know, Attila often says is to relieve that pressure cooker, right? So relieving that stress and relieving some of the pressure that they, that they feel on themselves all the time. So when we're checking in, um, the the whole point of modeling a check-in is so that way they can get an idea of what it looks like to to answer the question or to um to speak about the topic and um and so we want to make sure that we quickly model the check-in maybe offer it up to another mentor to check in as well if it's a if it's a little bit more complex and then get right to the boys right on tom Thank you, Tom. Tom, oh, Stater, Tom you, Stater. yeah, you, you, you've got a question. Yeah, uh, doing their own work outside the. Um, so, <clears throat> um, I'll just speak for myself. I do my own work um, every week. So I sit in my own groups. Um, I meet with my uh, with uh, you know with friends, and I <clears throat> and I check in with them, and. Uh, I do very, very similar work to what we do in these circles with the boys for myself. And, you know, um, I have my own therapy sessions and things like that. And so a lot of this, uh, a lot of the the work that I'm doing is done outside of the circle. And I'm so, I'm not so attached to that, um, that when I bring up that topic or when I bring up the the challenge in the circle that I feel the need to continue to talk about it. This is just a relevant topic. This is what happened to me. And has anybody else gone through this before? And, you know, I want to hear from all of you, if any of you are currently going through that, uh, that challenge. And let's talk about that. Uh, Joshua. Joshua. You want what, to chal what challenge is that? Oh, no, I think I was just replying to the question that uh, Tom was asking about, you know, d doing our own work and where, and then Tom was kind of touching up on that. Um, but it's unpacking our traumas, working whatever it is that uh, hurdles that we may have in life or whatever it is that, that we are going to be modeling yeah, to be able to work that through before or outside of the groups beforehand, be able to be good, um, know how our... When we're triggered, when we're activated, what is our physical cues, or what are, what is it that that uh, reminds us to say, "Oh, you know what? I'm kind of now getting back into you know processing my own stuff instead of being here to help them the the boys process." Okay, thank thank you, thank you. And and if you guys don't know, Joshua is our our newest team member. Uh, welcome to the team, Josh, and thank you for your contributions. And then uh, let's see, there are many men's groups. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we've got places. To, yeah, man, if you if you're looking for support, thank you, Frank Dunstetter. Yeah, if you are looking for for additional support in your lives, you know, uh, you know, uh, Frank uh, uh, Frank mentioned the Mankind Project. This is the uh, the the experience that 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 uh, this is where I met Craig McLean back in uh, 1994, and it was through that experience that we uh, we created Boys to Men. We did our own rites of passage initiation weekend, but we, there was men initiating men and. And we got the calling. Well, we should be doing this for our boys, and uh, so um, so the Mankind Project is a, is a great place to go if if you're looking for uh, more emotional uh, support or you need help working through traumas. And then um, you know, and I, you know, big another big part of my story is I think y'all know I've you know I've been in AA for 38 years. I've got 36 years uh, clean and sober, and. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the precepts around AA is about listening, accepting, and encouraging, and not telling. You can't tell anybody what to do, but you can certainly share your own story about what happened to you. You know, you know, it's it's we shared it in a general way what it was like, what happened, and what we are like now. You know, this is a. Uh, I mean, that's straight out of the big book, and so so a lot of this, the what we're doing in these circles is 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 stuff that you know you know, has worked in all kinds of different arenas, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really appreciate you asking the question about, uh, you know, doing the work outside of the circles, because it's, I feel that when I do my own work outside of the circle, I'm able to show up in, in a more clear space. And also when some, uh, when, a, whenever the boys are, are going through a challenge, I'm able to better relate to them because I have just gone through my own challenge. And so it's a, uh, I think that uh, it's also a form of modeling too. Okay. You know, uh, what really benefits these boys too, I mean, and the point of modeling is to, is to you know, present to them, here's how we, how, here's how I handle my challenges. I'm not suggesting and I'm not uh, recommending advising that this works for you, but here's how I got through mine, you know, and for me, you know, Mankind Project, meeting Joe and Craig, uh, you know, having my own Mankind group for almost 20 years, uh, stuck a lot, I've done just tons of personal development work, um, you know, I mean, even some guys on the call here have a maybe religious thing that worked for them, but we're not there to advise that, but we can say, hey, here's, here's how I got through this difficulty uh, in my life. And that's, that's what modeling is all about. But this is all, it's always in the context of this is what worked for me. I don't know what will work for you, but here's, here's what I did. And if nothing else, if they don't take to that, they, they can at least, the, the message is whatever you're going through, you can get through as well, you know, find your path. Okay. And to answer uh, Tom's uh, question about. Uh, Tom's, Tom's how Steve. Yeah, Tom Steger's uh, point about not having a formal program or structure around handling the mentor facilitator work. Um, so what we've been doing here in San Diego is that we've been uh, we we put out a um, uh, a notice to our uh, uh, some of our mentors that are um, that are supporting us that have uh, 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 mental health awareness or sorry mental health uh, expertise. And they are currently holding space for our facilitators um, once a month. And so we're doing it that way. And then we're working on developing a men-to-men -men group where we are holding space for the mentors as um, as the, we hold space for the boys. So uh, we're working, we're currently working on that model. And so I'm really grateful that you brought that up because um, it, it's such a, an important piece of, uh, of do, doing the work that we do. Um, if I'm expecting the boys to do the work in these circles, then it would make sense that I'm doing the work too. And providing that for uh, the men in the organization is a, a vital piece to that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Frankie. Go ahead, Frankie. Yeah. Hey, to, uh, I, that is a great question, but um, I'll share my little personal. I, as a person who deals with mental health issues, um, personally, I, I seek my own personal uh, therapist as well. And also, Boys to Men did implement a new EAP option 
which gives us options to call. And we do, we, um, the EAP does, I, I reached out myself, it offers free counseling, free therapy, and free help that we can call that voice men actually just put in, uh, I think it was a few weeks ago. So um, that's another option that they gave us. We get three uh, sessions with the therapist. We have, you can call and they'll stay on you for an hour and you can talk to a psychologist. And that is for uh, the um, for us facilitators as well. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and Frank, to answer your question, we send them here. We're doing, we're, this is a mentor training here. We do these every month. And then we also do our Reclaiming Your Teenage Fire uh, training um, uh, once a year. And um, that, and that's where we're, we're centering it, sending them, and that's what we're offering. And, um, um, and let's focus on the boys here. So uh, are, are we good with modeling and check-in? Yeah. Okay, good job, everybody. Thank you all. Um, you know, keeping them engaged and this can like this, this like like you know like when, when a lot of times most of the times I'm I'm in the room before the boys are you know with the men so I'm in the room when the boys come in the room so like I get to I I I practice engaging with them like straight out of the gate and it's really important to know their names you know it's really important that you know, when the, if that kid's showing up every week, you need to know his name, and and it's getting harder for me. But 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 I will lean into another mentor. What's this kid's name? Like, you know, because I want to give him a a proper welcome. You know, and 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 engage them uh, straight straight out out of the uh, gate. And then um, the other thing is like you know, and it and it's hard. You know, you got you got you got fifteen kids in a circle and four or five men and and um there's there's gonna be there's gonna be some grab ass going on and and um and and we got we gotta be we you know the facilitator's gotta be in charge and has gotta has gotta you know shut it down and and you can do it in a good way and 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 avoid having to you know um get into that bad dad energy but um you know, sometimes there has to be a sacrificial lamb, you know, and like, you know, if, if you call the kid out twice, you say, dude, if this may not be your week. If I have, if we have to stop again, I'm going to ask you to leave the room. And, um, and then, um, and then you have to follow through on that. You know, um, that's just, that's just part of the, uh, of the consequences, right? You know, we're here doing men's work and if um, you can't be a man today, it's okay because you're 13 years old. Not your not your fault, not a problem. Just not today. We'll see you next week. And um, so that's kind of how uh, uh, we're we're, uh, we're keep keeping them engaged. And I tell you what, you know, when you when you, if you if you have to take somebody out, that that pretty much gets everybody else's attention. Tom, did you want to add to uh, keeping them engaged or any yeah. of the other? Yeah, absolutely. So um, keeping them engaged is also <laughs> just um, keeping, uh, making sure that we're not just uh, solely focused on one boy uh, and and sitting on that boy for like 10, 15 minutes because there are several boys in the room. And if we're not asking the question and throwing the question around to the rest of the room, like, oh, how many of you have gone through this before? How many of you feel this way? And <clears throat> that keeps them all engaged. And so they have to be listening for that question. And so it's just a matter of engaging uh, the group intermittently. So that way the grab ass happens less often. And when I redirect my attention to somebody that is uh, that is maybe not listening and I ask him a question, then he knows that um, if he's if he's screwing around, then he's not going to know what's going on. And so, just making sure that I'm asking the question, and that avoids the shame. It it avoids the the reprimand. It's like, hey, you know, um, uh, what do you think about this? And then he's like, oh, what's the question? And then reminding ourselves that it's okay that he didn't hear that. What we're trying to do there is we're trying to re-engage him, and not so much uh, reprimand him for not listening, because in that situation. He clearly wasn't, and he knows it. And so we're just calling him out in a soft way and saying, hey, what do you think? 
And he's not going to know and say, okay, all right, so this is what's going on. And now he's re-engaged. And everybody else that wasn't engaged in that moment is now re-engaged as well. Attila? Yeah, go ahead, Attila. Um, I wanted to say that my experience between high school groups and middle school groups is different in what's necessary to keep them engaged. Ken Kales and I are involved with middle school that has about 16 boys that show up every week. And there's one of three things that we do to keep them engaged. First, we, we always start with what are our six guidelines? And the guidelines are where you have to participate, you have to listen, you have to respect who's talking, you can't take out your cell phones, um, you get two strikes. Uh, and if after two strikes, then we'll just ask you to go back to class and come back next week. And it just about every kid that we've had to pull out, we've had to pull out a lot of them out of that. Every one of them comes back. Yeah. Um, not, because we don't do it in a shaming way. It's always a, hey, you're just not ready to do the work this week. Because the other thing that we start with is we go, okay, why are we here? Just as an icebreaker. And then they'll say, oh, we're here to talk about our emotions, something like that. You know, yes, yes, yes. We're here to talk about what's getting in the way of you being the man you can be. We're here to talk about how you can be successful, uh, how can you can accomplish and be, do, and have whatever you want. So those are some of the things we do. But how we start each meeting is we'll either start with a topic or we'll go right into a check-in or we'll pull out uh, some questions from a box of questions that we've got. And the, the we'll just see what the energy is like in the group. We also, Ken's really good about this, making sure that when we've got groups of two or three boys who are now creating their ruckus in the corner because they're, they're buds, we'll break them up. So, you know, he'll get up and he'll move to the other side of the room and say, okay, okay, I'll trade seats with me. Okay, so that's part of the facilitator's job is to watch that dynamic. But, you know, like Ken being a, a mentor, he does a great job in watching that energy and, and kind of breaking up the circles a little bit so we can keep them engaged and keep them participating. So those are just a couple of the tricks that we use. I, um, first, I'd like to say that it's a zoo in there sometimes and Attila does a great job. I, I, I <laughs> wouldn't be able to keep my wits about me. And sometimes I don't. But I, I think that I've learned a lot, but I think one of the biggest things I've learned is that I've had to readjust uh, what I see as uh, success or progress because we have kids in there. Uh, every one of them, might, or most of them anyway, have ADHD or they've, they've, they've got something going on and it's very difficult for almost all of them to just sit still. And so, you know, maybe they were, you know, anxious at this level on the first week and now they're down to like this level. They're still, they're still disruptive, but it's less disruptive. And, um, and I, I, I've just had to learn to appreciate that more, uh, even if they're not able to focus so much on the the whole discussion. There are some little pops of insights, and it's like, okay, I, you know that that's good. Yeah, thank you, Ken. All right, all right. We good. We good there with uh, keeping them engaged. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about uh, group hijackers too, you know, and that's, those are the disruptive kids, you know, and, and how do you handle them? And I think we covered that and, and, and balancing participation, you know, um, you know, it, it's tough. We've, we've, we've got like 50 minutes and if we've got, you know, 15 kids, everybody gets like four minutes, you know, if, it, it, you know, if we can get through all the introductory stuff and, talk about mandated reporting and all the all the preliminary stuff that we have to do to 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 initiate the check-in you know um we got it and 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 then if some kid really has to share you know and is really you know going going someplace you know i don't i don't want to stop that kid uh you know uh and and sometimes uh um you know and it's going to be up to the facilitators but um i i, I will want to uh, let that kid have a little more time to to get whatever he needs for that day 
and know that we'll be back the next week. So, um, Tom, did you want to speak more on balancing participation? No, I think that we covered covered it really yeah, well. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Did, what one thing? I, last thing I wanted to add here: it's a little technique that worked for me in the last few weeks with a very squirrely middle school group is I found an ally. The the one kid in the group who's obviously obviously the leader. Yeah. And taken him on and asked him to, will you like co co mentor with me today? I'll give you two extra cookies at the end. Uh, or, you know, I'll give you some little special treat and you help you help me uh help keep the group moving forward so we're getting some work done because we are here to do work. Yeah. And this kid was great. He actually gave this kid who was totally disrupting the group two strikes. And he finally said, okay, Ryan, you're out. See you next week. And everybody it was just nice about it. You, you can't handle it to, this week. And he, he actually walked them back to class, came back to the group, and the energy changed, and we were able to go on. So that's just another technique that seems to be working, the ally. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Atul. All right. Uh, reflections versus projections. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, so um, a lot of times when when the boys are sharing, um, stuff comes up for for us too, and I know that you know a, a lot of these boys have gone through some stuff, and I've gone through some similar things, and um, and sometimes I want uh, you know I I think I know how they're feeling, but I don't. That's a projection. Yeah. But what I can offer instead is this is what happened to me, and this is how I handled it. And I can see you're working through this um, a similar thing, and you know whatever it is that you're going through right now, I'm here to support you. Uh, I don't know exactly how you're feeling, but I can relate to what's going on in your life right now. And so the reflection is more of an opportunity for for uh, for me to think about what happened to me, and then just share that and say, you know, hopefully that tells you that I can at least understand some part of what you're going through. And I'm not going to tell you what I think you're feeling, but I, but whatever it is that you're feeling, if you say that you're feeling this way, I'm here to, I'm here to, to receive that. And I'm here to understand that, that that's what you're going through and whatever you, uh, whatever support you need, the mentors are here for you. This, this is very, very critical guys. This is very critical because this is the part of of the work where we're really getting into our humanity. We're getting into the human experience. You know, the, the, you know, we all have experienced grief. We've all experienced um, loss, anger, frustration. And so when uh, our boys are sharing about that, it's important that, we're, we're we're not saying I know exactly how you feel, or when I was your age I did this. You know, it's it's just a it's a long, it's about coming alongside them instead of um, coming at them. And um, um, but this this is also the magic, you know. And this is where you know the symbiotic healing comes for the mentors as well as for the boys, you know, you know, because if it if in our reflection with the boys we find some wholeness for ourselves because that kid is taking a little nugget from you you know and you you your your pain your grief is bringing value to somebody else's life that's 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 why this thing works this is this is why we're doing these these monthly meetings this is why tom's working so hard to to create these opportunities because we want to keep you guys engaged and and if and if you're only showing up to be a good guy, we know that that's not enough. You know that 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 that, that this has got to fill a part of your soul as well. All right, here we go. All right, check in. Whip. Uh, you guys have seen this scale of one to ten. How how are you feeling today? You know and. Um, you know, depending on the size of the group, sometimes this is all we can pull off. You know, uh, we've, we've got 20 kids out at Lakeside and 
we actually just recently split it into two circles because we had enough mentors, thank God, that we could uh, do that. But if you don't have that luxury and you got to, you got to, you got to run a group, you know, one, one to 10, how are you feeling today? I'm a seven. What makes you a seven? And, um, and then, and then, and, and, you know, everything is about open-ended questions. And he said, well, I'm a seven because, uh, you know, I, uh, I liked my breakfast or, or whatever, you know, okay. You know, so, um, and it's also like, you know, we're not, we're not there to be conned either, you know, you know, so, 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 you know, you, you can ask these open-ended questions like, well, tell me more, you know, what, what does that mean? Um, uh, until I see your hand up. Yeah. Just real quick. Just one thing. I know this isn't one of Tom's favorite things, but um, a, a variation. Don't say it. <laughs> no, he already knows because he already I, he he says it many times. Uh, just one variation on the whip check-in. Sometimes, if we're in a topic or asking questions, and it, you know maybe that takes some time, we do a whip check-in at the end. Then it's just okay, real quick. How are you doing? I want to ten. But usually on a check-in, we'll say, "How are you doing?" on a one to 10 at home? How are you doing a one to 10 at school? And how are you doing one to 10 overall? And if they yeah. break it up like that, then that sometimes they'll open up a little bit more to give us a clue. Well, I'm an, I'm an eight at home, but I'm a, a seven at school. Oh, okay, yeah. well. And then that just gives us an opportunity to ask questions a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's great. Thank, thank you, thank you for that, Attila. Great. Um, so I, I think everybody's pretty familiar with the one to 10 and, 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 and how, and, and, um, you know, it's amazing sometimes, you know, where that, that, that can lead these guys, you know, um, feelings, check in, check in with the basic, basic emotion, sad, mad, glad, afraid, shamed. And then, and then, uh, again, applying those, those open-ended questions around, you know, you know, t tell me more. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sad my, my, my dog died. Oh man. You know, tell us about your dog. You know, what do you miss? And just those, 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 uh, those things that just drop, that continue to drop them down, you know? And, um, a lot of them can be framed just like, you know, well, you know, and, uh, they're talking about something they've done or, or, or something th that they're feeling and, and, and you ask them, you know, like, you know, well, how's that working? You know, you know, is this what you want? You know, mm -hmm. and you know, the, these kinds of questions are uh, uh, are are the things that are going to continue to engage engage the feeling and get them to uh, drop a, a a little deeper. I, you know, and then you know, there's also you know, the part of the active listening is also the waiting, is the pausing. And then also part of it is the uh, parroting, you know, when uh, when a kid says, yeah, I, um, my little brother's driving me crazy and, and I, 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 just, I just get so mad. And, and if he's, if you give him that, that minute to let him feel that and say, you get so mad. And yeah. And then, and then let them drop into more of the story that way we're not even asking the question we're just affirming what they're saying and they're being heard and um and and reflected on and then they'll take themselves to the next level um you know joe this you just made a good point here that this work really is the art of asking good questions mm -hmm. and taking being in touch with letting them be heard and then being engaged with them energetically. So you know how you can rephrase the same question, maybe take them a little deeper, maybe take them a little deeper as far as they're willing or able to go. But it is, it is the art of asking the right question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Joshua, what's use am I? Uh, essentially, it's a motivational interviewing. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll we'll be covering that in uh in a couple I, months. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.
<laughs> oh, now now we're all in suspense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. I had to build up for that, you know? Yeah, yeah thank you, Josh. I like the suspense. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, um, so whip feeling topic, uh, start with a topic. I don't know if, if you guys have seen some of these adventure cards, we've, we, we've ordered several decks of them and, uh, they've got just such great topical questions. Uh, I think I, I'm getting a lot of horsepower out, out, out of those. Um, and, uh, but you know, the, the, you know, we can, we also, you know, we can, uh, uh, talk about real life stuff, you know, real, real life topics that, that, you know, a lot of kids are, are going through, you know, a guaranteed half of them are going through a divorce or have been through a divorce, you know, cause that's the rate in America. And in some, you know, pockets of our culture, you know, it's, it's much higher, you know, and some of the underserved communities we're in, it's much higher. So, you know, we, we, we talk about, um, you know, you know, divorce, we talk about, you know, uh, uh, you know, abuse, we talk about, um, you know, gangs, um, you know, whatever the topic is, you know, we don't want to project, we don't want to, you know, be too generalized and, and, uh, and organically, that'll, th those topics come up too, you know, as part of the check-in. So, it's just a, a a matter of how to follow the boys when that kind of stuff goes up or when we start it, you know, be clear on the topic. And, and that's what I love about those adventure cards. They uh, they kind of create the topic and uh, it's a little cheat sheet for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, want anything to add to that? Yeah, so the topics can be things that are also relevant Um you know, during that part of the, the time of year, uh, it could be uh, Thanksgiving that's coming up or it could be, yeah. um, you know, 4th of July or actually that's during the summer. But, you know, things can come up. And uh, if we're talking to the counselors and the point of contacts and they tell us something has happened in the school, like um, just over this uh, this spring break, we we lost a. Uh, um a uh um a student and a teacher at um at bayfront and so that's a topic that's going to be relevant when we come into that circle hey you know let's talk about this like who's you know who knew that person and um you know there are topics like we just had an adventure mountain weekend and some of the boys uh, yeah. just came back so that can be a topic and so we're just going to ask the question and just have that uh, that'd be the theme for that particular circle. Yeah. Great. Attila, do you want to take the rose check-in? I was just going to ask Tom, what is that? <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, so uh, Franco brought this in, um, I think he brought this in last year at an open community circle. And yeah. the, the, the rose check-in is... Uh, the bud, the rose, or the flower, and the thorn. So the the bud is uh, whatever is uh, coming to fruition. It's not quite uh, it's not quite present yet, but it is uh, it is in the works, and it is it's something that um, that you may be looking forward to. Then the the rose or, or the flower is what is present right now. What is uh, relevant in your life in the moment right now? And the thorn is what is. Uh, what is something that is challenging in your life right now, or what is the biggest challenge that you have right now? Okay. All right. All right. Um, getting to know you. Oh, wait, are there any questions on the, the Rose check-in? Any questions on any of these check-ins? Yeah, you know, the, our version of kind of the Rose thing in some of our groups are you know, when we're doing the check-in, um, you know, what's, um, what do you struggle with right now? If it's schools that have four, five or six, you know, what's your biggest struggle at school or, and what's working for you in school? Um, but I, uh, and then, you know, so it's, it's a version of the, the Rose version. I just hadn't seen that. One. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to lead it. 
<laughs> I knew you were going to call me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the getting to know you one, uh, I actually learned from Attila um, when I first started volunteering with uh, at Ivy. And so um, what I learned was that you know, there were there are three topics, you know, school, home and friends. And uh, he modeled that earlier with the, the whip check in as well. So we can layer these on top of each other. So getting to know, especially at the beginning of the, the academic year or when we uh, first start a circle, uh, the getting to know you uh, check in is a really great way to get to know the boys and build rapport and they get to know us and um, they give us a, us an opportunity to um, to dig a little bit deep but in a way that makes sense and so they don't feel like we're prying into their their personal lives so early it's just these are normal conversational questions excellent all right and the open check-in is you know what are you sitting on what's cooking for you right now mm -hmm. and uh, uh whatever is present in, in 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 that moment can 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 be the check-in and so we don't go in with the topic and just each boy gets to you know share with what what's present what's going on right now and uh and what do you need help with you know that's, that's always a good uh open check-in as well as uh you know i you know i gotta remind the guys you know like they you know especially when they start talking and and i said well do you need support and um and you know, and 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 five of you guys have showed up in that school. And I said, you know, I, I like pointing out, you know, the only reason these five guys are here is to support you. That you know, use your resources, fellas. This is this is why we're here. You know, so uh, you know, you the the life is tough, and and we all have our challenges, and it's hard to do it all alone. So use your resources. Um. Anything to add to open check-in, Tom? I'm good. Good. I'm all right. Involved. Any questions on check-ins? No? Great. Great. Okay. Basic questions. Ask follow-up on questions versus interrogations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the kids um, talking about feeling sad you know the the question is it it, it 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 we we're not going into anything like why are you sad you know it it it, it first of all it, it's an observation i i can see your sadness you know and it's an invitation to, to, tell tell us more about that you know it's it it, it there, it's follow and he says well you know I just found out my mom's got cancer, you know. And you know, and then there's the empathy. Oh, that's that that's horrible. That 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 sounds tough, man. You know, and then um, you know, uh, how are you taking care of yourself? You know, how how are you dealing with this? And and then and then uh, and you know, so there. We we want to avoid the why and the what questions. And uh, and just come alongside them with more empathy and, and compassion and uh, open ended questions that uh, continue to engage the boy. Um, we don't and 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 we don't want to uh, give leading leading questions. You know, um, if if a kid's uh, talking about how um, he's failing in school. You know, you know, the, the question it has, it has to be uh, um, something more along the line instead of, uh, well, why are you failing? What aren't you doing? Those are not going to be helpful questions for a kid. It's just, it's just, it's just, you just say, well, are you are you are you smart? Are you smart, Jonathan? Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, so how do, have you always been a, a failing school? No. So how does it feel to be as smart as you are and, 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 and still failing, you know, and, um, or if, uh, have you always failed? No. When did you start failing? You know, six weeks ago, 
Well, what happened six weeks ago? You know, it's about getting, we're striking at the, at the root, you know, the, 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 the we want to strike at the root of, of, of where this stuff is originating, not um, the why or the what. Um, and Tom, did you have a question? It looks like you do. Yeah, I, this, I think I want to spur on a little bit of discussion here. This, this goes into the, where are the questions coming from? And what I mean by that is, uh, yeah. what, as a leader, what's my commitment that's underneath all of these questions? Not these specific questions, but any any question that I might ask the boys. Am I coming from being a know-it-all and I have to control the situation and I'm just going to get in people's junk and shut them down? Or yeah. is there something in, in Joe and Tom and, you know, a lot of the guys that I've seen lead circles or lead trainings, what I see or what I hear in the background is incredible compassion, incredible yeah. kindness, welcoming energy, the acceptance that we talked about earlier, yeah. um, um, listening for people's greatness. So if I'm trying to get at the gold in that young man, I'm going to ask a question that tries to uncover the gold, just being curious without having any judgment about it or anything. Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of what you're pointing at here, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, I, I, another huge, this has just been always been a pet peeve of mine is, you know, um, Asking a kid, how does that make you feel? You know, uh, to me, you know, that, that, that puts them in the victim role. Like they don't have any control how they feel, you know, everybody's making them feel one way or the other. And so uh, it's a real simple fix guys. Take the make you out, just say, and how does that feel? And, uh, um, and that way uh, I won't have to get all riled up. <laughs> what I do on weekends when I hear, how does that make you feel? I, I just want to choke people at that point. And it's not right. I, I'm not proud of that. Um, yes, Attila. How many times <laughs> have I choked you, Attila? <laughs> <laughs> I still have the finger marks. Um, <laughs> the, this, thank you for bringing that up, Tom, because as we're taking it, as we're saying, for, you know, this is the art of asking good questions. And it is the art of raising their emotional intelligence by connecting what they're thinking and what they're feeling. So any of the questions that lead them down to a clarity of what the issue is, so then they can then take taking the dive down into, but how does that feel? So I'm failing, how many classes are you failing? Oh, four classes. Have you always failed your classes? No. Was there time that you were getting you know, passing grades. Yeah. How did that feel? Felt good. Mm. What do you want for yourself? Still going back and always trying to make the connection between what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Because like in mankind, right, we always talk about the greatest journey, right? The 18 inches connecting head to the heart. And so to be a whole person, human whole man showing up, it's being conscious and aware of how they're feeling connecting that with what they're thinking and and let them solve their own problem but it's always the art of getting down to how does that feel uh and definitely not asking so why do you feel that <laughs> don't yeah. do that don't yeah. do that yeah and don't do it around joe no why yeah 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 the tack that i usually take is how am i helping him figure out his own life because it's not my life. I'm not going to figure it out for him. So my questions are always going to be revolving around, well, what, where do you want to go? So is this where you want to be? And if that's where you want to be, then great. Like, that's your life. And, but it sounds like because you brought it up, you want to be somewhere else. So where is that? What, what goals do you have for yourself? And then he leads himself and mm -hmm. to say, okay, well, how are you going to get there? Well, I'm going to try this. Okay. Do you need some support around that? Okay, let's let's try that. And 
you know, if if you need support, I'm here for you. There there are other men here that are, uh, that are here for you. You've got your classmates, you know, they're here for you. And then, you know, next week, can you would you be open to sharing with us what uh, what um, came of that? And then they come back next week and say, you know what, that really worked. Okay, so how do you feel about that? Do you, you know where do you want to go from here? And it gives them an opportunity to just lead themselves. And all I'm doing is just asking them the questions that are going to help him guide himself. Yeah. Excellent. Great job. Thank you, guys. Any questions on basic questions? Yeah. All right. Tom, this is all you. All right. So charges. Uh, so um, like Joe said at the beginning, you know, in a space with a bunch of rowdy boys, um, emotions are going to be flying around. And oftentimes that comes with, uh, you know, some feeling of disrespect or uh, anger. And, and then they, you know, oftentimes they, they, uh, they lash out at each other and they, they don't know how to direct that energy. And so this is an opportunity for us to provide them with uh, a couple of uh, steps that they can use to to clear uh, that energy, and so it's a, and it's also an opportunity for us to learn. Uh, you know, when I know that sometimes I'll get, uh, I'll have my own judgments and projections about what's going on and how things I how I think things should go, and then all of a sudden now I find myself um, charged up, and this is an opportunity for me to clear that energy so that way i can come back with a more clear head so um in this situation um oftentimes there are uh, uh there uh there are two people that are involved in this particular thing it's usually the person that that has the charge and the person that uh that um they have a charge with and so this is uh, it's important to recognize that the person that has the charge it's about them it's not about the person that uh that they have a charge with, which is uh, who we're going to call the mirror. The mirror is there just to reflect back to them what is going on um, uh, in uh, in their life right now. And so uh, we set it up with uh, the the mirror and the participant, or who the person that has the the charge, and then we have a facilitator, so that way uh, we can guide them through uh, the process and. Um, we have to make sure that we're that we're clear that um, that both participants are willing to participate in this, and that they uh, if they need support that they're given support in some way, and that the mirror understands that this is not about him, this is about the person that has the charge. And so that's not, uh, that, yeah. not always an easy concept, you know. Not you, always an easy. Yeah, it's, it's just like you know. And not easy for men to do either, you know. Um, so, so uh, to ask this of boys is um, is a lot. Uh, they 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 tend to get there quicker than men get there, though. Uh, in my experience, <laughs> yeah. You know, this is one Tom that uh, might have a be part of a a practice session or something on how to do that. Mm -hmm. We had uh, we did. I've seen two situations where two boys uh, had, you know, charge, and we went through the typical MKP kind of clearing, and and it worked out great. However, uh, I think it's something that a facilitator, somebody who's had some practice on the process, to make sure it's effective. Yeah, this mm -hmm. we could do a whole training on do on how to do this. This this yeah. could be a a half day workshop for sure. Yeah, it's about yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, so I'll just go through really quickly what those steps are, because there are a couple of different ways that we can take this. And so first, we need to start out with obviously the the uh, person that has the charge and then the person that they have the charge with. And so that's the participant and the in the mirror. And um, and so the first thing that we're going to get clear is what actually happened. And it's just about the facts. It's just this is what happened. This happened. This happened. This happened. This happened. And any time that they say anything other than then something that happened, then we have to stop them and say, okay, you know, uh, that 
it, it's oftentimes a, either a feeling or a judgment. And so they'll say something like, I feel like when he did this, wait, that feeling is a feeling, right? Or I think that, well, you think that, but are we clear that that actually happened? And so it's a matter of understanding what, um, you know, what actually happened. And this is something that needs to be clear on both sides. So that way we can get all the facts straight. And this is just the the person that is uh, doing the, the, that has the charge. The, the mirror doesn't say anything. And then they get to express um, what their uh, what they thought happened or what their judgments are around what happened. So they get to share uh, all the judgments, and then they get into um, uh, how they reacted or responded in that situation. Oh, I got angry, and then I withdrew, or I got angry, and, and then I pushed him. And this is how I reacted. This is how I responded to the situation. And so that's one way to go with it. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish that track. Um, and then they talk about how they felt in um, in that situation when they did this or said this. I felt, and that gives them an opportunity to to really um, dig into what it is that is going on inside of uh, you know in their body at that moment, and then. They get to reflect on it and uh, and uh, discover what happened in the past um, or um, where they might have felt that in the past. And typically, uh, the the best route is uh, when that happened to them the first time. Yeah. And, and so that's uh, that's one way that we can take it. And then after the uh, for the second track, we can do uh, after the judgments, we can go right into feelings how they felt, what does that bring up for you? And then um, and then, if it seems as though they're projecting um, those behaviors, um, it could be somebody in their life or it could be them that is, that uh, that's going through or that, uh, that um, has done those things before. And all they're doing is projecting that onto the other person saying, you know what, I don't like that about me, but they're not willing to say that about themselves. They're just saying it about somebody else. So it gives them an opportunity to recognize that somebody in their life, whether it be, you know, um, somebody that they're close to, or it may be themselves that is doing this particular thing. And then, um, and then they get to reflect and say, well, uh, or ask uh, where do they do that particular thing uh, in their own life, and so that that projection could just be themselves, and they are disliking themselves in some way. And from there, no matter which track you you take, you can just go down through that and um, and ask them to own those projections and own that they are um, that they are taking something that is relevant in their lives and uh, and putting it on somebody else and attacking that and asking them if they're willing to take that back and to withdraw those projections. And from there, uh, we can we can go back through the cycle if they don't feel complete. And if they do feel complete, then we can um, we can move on from there. And hopefully by then they've worked through that charge. And if not, then we can we can figure it out from there. Yeah, this this yeah. It's a good is, overview, Tom. It's a good yeah. overview, Tom. And it, it definitely it definitely needs practice. I mean, it it needs practice. No, yeah. not the, not this, but I mean, we need to practice that ourselves. Is what you're, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and again, we could include that this with that half day workshop we could do on charges and clearings because uh, and because you know it, it's one thing to 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 walk somebody through it, but when you can actually do, you know role model it. And, and and break it down and have and and have a script and 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 know you know uh, you know show all the dynamics that are involved it, it it's uh it's it's experientially it's different than uh read you know but tom great job giving the overview and uh let's any any questions on clearings <laughs> do we have to clear anybody here yeah all right <laughs> We're at an hour and a half. What else we got left here, Tom? We just got discipline and closing the circle. I mean, I think we covered discipline for the most part. And yeah, yeah we did. School, and so we can yeah. move on from here. There we go. Biggest thing I, I just have to throw in there, especially when it comes around discipline, is 
you know, we're not trying to control behavior. Uh, we're not there to shame them. We're not blamed there to guilt them because they already get enough of that from at home or they probably wouldn't be in the circle, you know, if they got enough love at home. So uh, the, you know, the word discipline always kind of makes me cringe. We're really there to love them back into their natural state. And, and, and that's really about, you know, giving them the space, hope, allowing them to be heard. Uh, but it's not shaming and, and uh, guilting or blaming because that we if we start to do that too harshly with these boys, we shut them down and we're yeah. trying to keep them open. That's yeah. that's always the tricky part about working with boys as opposed to working with men. Working with boys, we, in, in, in every way, we don't want them to put up the wall that got them in our circle in the first place. Okay. Thank you, Attila. Next slide. Closing a circle. Yeah. So lots of ways to uh, uh, close a circle. You, uh, yeah, unfortunately, for, you know, my experience is when that bell goes off. They're gone. <laughs> they're bolting, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't, I, 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 that, that. Yeah, we have to be mindful of the time. And if if you want to do a closing uh, round, then it can be really quick. It could be it could take anywhere from one to two minutes. If it could be a whip, uh, like um, like Attila was saying, yeah. but we do have to be mindful of the time when we're uh, uh, if we want to do a closing uh, a closing round. And yeah. so there are opportunities there, and um, as long as we're as long as we're keeping track, and so that way they don't bolt off. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 we've got time to pull to pull them back in, and I will I, I I will okay everybody sit down sit down sit down, and I and I like the closing rituals I I like it if if we everybody puts a hand in it on three boys to men and then the, we just en en end it like that and so there's there's lots of ways to do that I like I, and and it's it's important because they got to know that they're in a different space when they're in our circles you know that this is not school we are you know we are. Uh, they're doing men's work and uh, and we got to bring the intention and the spirit and you know ritual and ceremony are, are are really big tools for creating that liminal space for boys to you know transcend so um, yeah, I think it's important that they don't feel like their school or our, our circle time bleeds into their school time or the other way around because it like you were saying, Joe, that liminal space, right? There's a separation there, where when they enter our into our space, it's a completely different thing. It's not school. And then when they when they leave, before they leave, they need to remember, hey, you're entering back into a different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 when we, you know, create that and say that and affirm that, you know. It, it just sensed the intention for believing that. And um, yeah, and then covering logistics, you know, you know, I know that this is a big part of our open community groups. You know, we we make all the announcements there because we're not under the time constraints that we are in school. But yeah, we, you know, when we want to, um, you know, announce an upcoming training and get guys to do their paperwork and, and handle enrollment and do all the stuff that all the other stuff that we need done, you know, to that, that, that keeps us, you know, uh, in, uh, integrity with, uh, uh, uh our, our, uh, uh, core values and our expectations and, and our record keeping, but also, um, the schools, you know, because uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility to, to, to track the information that we gather and report back. So, um, yeah, we, it's important that we, uh, uh, you know, continue to engage these guys and get them up, get, get them as, up on the weekend when they're ready, when they're ready being key and, um, also, uh, get, getting their enrollment form so that we're protected with insurance and, uh, photo usage, all that, all that stuff that, that, that is, uh, necessary in this, uh, litigious society. Um, uh, anything else on closing a circle? That's all I've got. Is, and is there another slide? There is. Oh, good. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank, thank you so much. I got, I've got a personal ask. Uh, 
we've got a we've got a gala. Uh, th this is uh, on April thirteenth. I think you've uh, have you all received information about our gala April thirteenth? Yes. Yeah, Dana has not. Okay, Dana, I'll get it to you. Um, so this is this is uh, this is a major fundraiser for us, and you know I don't know if you guys know, but you know we're we're charging the schools five thousand dollars, but it's costing us twenty five thousand dollars a year per school to deliver this program. So we're coming alongside them with our own resources, our own grants, our own 